silence. This, a time only for tributes. Today, our country, our people, this house, are united in mourning. Queen Elizabeth II was this great country's greatest monarch. And for the vast majority of us, it feels impossible to imagine a Britain without her. All our thoughts are with her beloved family, our royal family, at this moment of profound grief. Today, there are countless people in this country and around the world who have experienced the same sudden access of unexpected emotion. And I think millions of us are trying to understand why we are feeling this deep and personal and almost familial sense of loss. Perhaps it's partly that she's always been there, a changeless human reference point in British life. The death gun salute was longer than any that has come before. 96 rounds fired, one for each year of her life, in Hyde Park, Edinburgh, Windsor, Gibraltar, Cardiff, Northern Ireland, Stonehenge, Plymouth, Jersey, and at the Tower of London. As people gathered at Buckingham Palace, the Queen's London home, the Premier League announced it was postponing the weekend's fixtures. The last night of the proms has already been cancelled. We are entering a period of royal mourning and national mourning. Among those who were at the palace, two Chelsea pensioners who had met the Queen. Ordinary people, she would put at ease. Mm. And um, she just had that wonderful ability uh, to be personable to people. Thank you very much. Queen, as a mother, a grandmother, and a great grandmother. <laughs> Her death dominates today's front pages of newspapers from around the world in a way that only a few events do in each generation. The country is now preparing for the formal process of marking the passing of the monarch, the lying in state, the funeral, the end of the era of Queen Elizabeth II. Daniel Sanford, BBC News. And the beginning of the era of King Charles III, who has been at Buckingham Palace. We saw earlier the extraordinary scenes as he met well wishes there, and he also had an audience with Britain's new Prime Minister, Liz Truss, who was uh, asked to form a government only earlier this week by the late Queen Elizabeth. Let's uh, go to our correspondent, Leila Nafi, who's uh, in Downing Street. So a first uh, audience between the new King and the new Prime Minister. Of course, we won't ever know anything about what was said. Yeah, certainly a significant event, Ben, the first meeting between our new head of state and our new head of government, both new to their positions this week. These weekly meetings between uh, the monarch and her prime minister have been taking place throughout the Queen's reign, a chance for the monarch and the prime minister to meet in private to discuss government matters in a in a setting that is entirely private. The Queen, of course, remained politically neutral throughout her reign. King Charles will, as the head of state, remain politically neutral too. But this is a chance to discuss government business and will become a regular appointment, a weekly appointment between King Charles and Liz Truss. It's worth, I think, noting that in the Commons today, where tributes have been paid to the Queen from MPs across the House. Liz Truss, as Prime Minister, led those tributes. But of course, we have two former Prime Ministers still in the Commons, now on the back benches, Boris Johnson and Theresa May, both paying their own tributes to the Queen and mention specifically their memories, their fond memories of their weekly audiences with the Queen. So you could see there, get a sense from Theresa May and Boris Johnson about how much those weekly interactions with the Queen meant to them. So we can see now that, Prince, uh, that King Charles and Liz Truss 
will adapt to their new roles and hold those weekly meetings and get into their new dynamics, but it will be a regular feature of both of them as they take their new roles.